Hi, I'm George, and in this video I'll be showing you how you can do tile printing in Photoshop Elements. This picture here is too large for my printer. There is a standard sheet of paper right there. This is four times that size, and I'll show you how you can print this onto four sheets of paper, and then you can then tape that together. Now if you like this video, make sure you hit that like button. Don't forget to click on share, and also subscribe as well. And to look at my complete training course, there's a link for that right down there in the description. Okay, let's get to it. Sometimes you may have a situation where you need to print something larger than your printer can actually handle. And the way that's normally done is you'll print that onto four or more sheets. In this case, this is four sheets here. Now, a lot of programs have an automatic tiling function. Unfortunately, Photoshop Elements doesn't have that. Now, there is one possibility. Let me bring up the print dialog box here, file and print. And that's that your printer might have a tiling function, even though Photoshop Elements doesn't have that, in which case that would work. You can see here that the Im image doesn't fit on this sheet of paper. There's my standard sheet of paper right there, 8.5 by 11. And I'm doing this at 11 by 22, or 17 by 22 rather, right down here. And that says scaled. And what it does is it actually will scale this down and fit that onto a regular sheet of paper. So yeah, there's a, a problem on that. Even though it says 17 by 22 right here, and down here it says actual size, 22 by 17. And over here it says 22 by 17. Even though all of those say that larger paper size, what you'll actually get is this scaled down. It says scaled right there. Scaled down to whatever the standard size paper is for your printer. In my case, it's an 8.5 by 11 standard sheet. So all these that say scaled are going to actually reduce the size of the image down to your standard paper size. So that's not going to work to give us that tiled function. Now, sometimes your printer may be able to actually do the tiling, even though you don't see it in here. And you'll find that down here where it says Page Setup. This brings up the printer properties for your specific printer. Right now, I'm using a Canon TS9100 series printer right here. And in here, everything looks about the same. I have standard paper in here and so forth. But if I go over here to Page Setup, and right down here, Page Layout, they have an option here for tiling poster. But notice that this only gives me two sheets. I only go as large as a two sheet paper. So I can do, instead of an 8.5 by 11, I can do 11 by 17, but that's still not big enough for my project. So this won't work. But it is possible that whatever printer you have may be able to do that larger print size. So take a look at that first, where it says page setup. And just double check to see if your printer can actually do a larger tiling, because that may be all you need. If your printer can't do that like mine can't, you know, I, I could print you know, one side or this side here. I could do that on my printer, but I couldn't do all four. Then we'll have to do this manually. Now the idea here is to copy parts of this image into a different file and then set it up so we can then overlap those just by a little bit and allow us to tape it together and make a larger picture. Now one thing about this, because we're taping this thing together, it's not going to be a real nice display quality image. I wouldn't recommend doing this with photographs, for instance. You're going to be seeing those seams in there. You're going to be seeing the lines. It's not a good way to go. But let's say you're doing a kid's party and you want a big picture like this to put up on the wall for the kid's party. This is just fine for that. Or if you need to make a template for something, this will work out great for that particular kind of a use. So let's see how this is done. The first thing we need to do is to give ourselves some guidelines in here to give us that overlap. Now what I want is a half inch overlap on either side. Now these two guidelines here, this is showing me the paper size. So I have four sheets of paper in here. And I want to put in a guideline on either side of this, on either side of this, giving me a half inch overlap on either side. And that's pretty easy to do. Right now this is at 11. So if I had 10 and a half and 11 and a half on the vertical, that would give me those two guidelines. We'll put those exact by using the view and new guide. And this is going to be a vertical guide. So the first one's at 10 and a half, that's 10.5, there it is. Second one is at 11 and a half, same thing. New guide, and then just type in 11.5, 11 
There we go. Now on this side, we're at eight and a half inches. So eight and nine would be my two numbers here for the horizontal guidelines. Same thing, view, come down to new guide, change this to horizontal, and I'll set this first one at eight. There it is. And then set the second one down here, new guide, make sure it's still horizontal, and set this at nine. There we are. Now we can copy out parts of this image and give us an overlap in there, making it easier to put it together and then tape it together. We now need another file, a new file. So I'll just do file, new, blank file, and I'll set this one at the standard US paper size. Now I'm doing this wide instead of tall, so I want the width to be my wider number, so I'll set this one at 11, and then set the height at 8.5. That would give me the horizontal image. There we go, I'll just dock this right there, so both docked. There's the original and here's my smaller size. Now we can put all four pieces into the one file and then just set them as separate layers and then just print each layer separately. So let's go back over here again. Now I'm going to do this, let's do this left upper left hand corner first. I'll grab the selection marquee up here, this is the rectangular marquee. Go up to view and make sure that snap to guides is checked. And that is, that's just fine. And then come outside the top here and then pull this down until we come down to that second set of lines. So down to the middle and then go one beyond. So that we're outside and we get the overlap in here and the overlap right down there. Make sure you're on the right layer over here and then do a copy, edit copy switch over here, and then edit, paste. And there we go. Now I wanna take this, because that's our overlap in here, we wanna take this and just put this right against that bottom and right edge, just like that. Now, most printers are going to leave a little bit of a white space in here, a little bit of a white space down there, they won't print clear to the edge. If you have one that prints clear to the edge, that may be a little bit easier, but in most cases it'll be about a quarter of an inch in there, that's why I did a half inch overlap so even with a quarter of an inch, we have a half inch to work in here to properly align this. So there's our first piece. Let's do a new layer. I'll, hide, I'll just hide that one. New layer. Let's do our next piece. That's this side over here. Back to our tool. Let's just deselect outside the upper right hand corner this time. And again, pull to the further away guidelines. There it is. So. The middle one is the actual paper size, and then pull to the guidelines just past the middle. Same thing, edit, copy. Back to our other file over here. Edit, paste. And then grabbing the move tool, let's move this to the left and bottom right there. So again, the cut edges are the ones you want against the edge of your paper. And once again, this position now gives us a half inch overlap area on those two sides. Okay, let's do the same thing again. New layer right here, let's go back over here. We'll do this side next, and let's just deselect, grab that rectangular marquee. Same trick, pull the marquee up till you're at the guidelines that are just past the middle point, and then edit, copy, back to our new file, edit and paste. This time, these are the cut lines here, so move those against the edges. There it is. Back over here again and get our last side. And then deselect back to the elliptical marquee or the rectangular marquee rather. Put in your selection like that. Edit copy. Back over here, make a new layer. Let's hide that one. And then edit paste. And again, your cut sides are right here and right here, so move those against the sides of your paper. And there we go. So we're all set, now we can now print this onto four sheets of paper. All you have to do is show one layer and hide the rest, print this, and then hide that, show your next one, print this, hide that, show your next one, print this, hide that, show your next one, print that, and then you're all set to go. You have four sheets of paper, with the four different parts of your image. And again, that half inch overlap on each one. So you can then do a little trimming or just visually line it up and it should work out just fine. And then either tape it or glue it together 
I kind of like tape on paper because glue tends to wrinkle the paper up. But there you go. That's how to do a manual tiling of an image if your printer won't allow you to do the tiling automatically. All right, if you like this video, make sure you hit that like button. Don't forget to click on share. Also make sure you subscribe and click that bell icon to get notifications. And take a look at my complete training course for Photoshop Elements. And there's a link for that right down there in the description. All right, and I'll see you next time.